This demonstration shows how ship constructor can be used to rapidly develop a structural model. In this case, a unit located midships. During the basic design phase, a model needs to be produced with enough detail to accurately estimate weight and center of gravity, produce an early stage bill of materials, define the space, and allow export into analysis software like FEA. For this reason, details like end cuts, cutouts, mouse holes, and seams are not required. As a starting point, we have imported a surface model into Ship Constructor. We have marked sections on the hull and used those sections to define the planar groups. The sections were defined using location groups. Location groups define parallel references throughout the ship and will be used as datum references when modeling the different planes. Before we start modeling, we will activate the task. It is good practice to use tasks as it is a great way of assigning and managing, tracking a set of changes to be made to the ship and transferring changes between sister ships. First up, we'll model the main deck. What we see here is the outline of the deck we defined in the hull model. The outline needs to be mirrored about the center line of the ship, creating a closed boundary to define the deck plate. Using the Mark Group Intersections features, we can show the locations of bulkheads. Show datum locations on the deck plate shows where we need to locate our stiffeners. We can then create our first profile. End treatments and product hierarchy are not important at this stage. Using the copy, mirror, or array commands maintains a relationship with the original part. Should we add end cuts, cutouts, trims, or change the size of the profile later, all the profiles will update automatically. We can then mirror the profiles about the center line of the ship as it, in this case, is symmetrical. Before moving on, under the active UCS command, we can create a new parallel plane for the deck thickness. This will be used later to create a parametric construction line. I'll skip ahead, create the other decks, and we'll look at creating the first longitudinal bulkhead. Similar to creating the main deck, we can use the mark group intersection command to show critical locations. In this case, we will show the deck mold and thickness planes. Using both these planes to define the deck creates a parametric relationship for the longitudinal plate should the deck change height. It also factors in the deck plate's thickness. Vertical profiles can now be added to the bulkhead plate. However, this time we will apply a trim. The ends are trimmed to the appropriate deck planes. Should the deck height change or connecting profiles change, they will update automatically. We will now repeat this process adding a profiles to the upper deck. Using the copy command, we have attached these profiles at all the datum locations maintaining a relationship to the original. Like the deck plate, we will now add a UCS plane for the plate thickness, which will be used later on when defining the frames. The longitudinal bulkhead has only been created on the starboard side. We need to mirror it about the center line of the ship. The objects can then be transferred to the appropriate planar group. Because the bulkhead was created using the mirror command, the relationship with the original part will be maintained for when the time comes to add properties or change the profile type. I will now create the other longitudinal bulkheads and skip ahead to the frames. Similar to the other planar groups, frames can be defined by mirroring the construction lines about the center line of the ship using mark group intersections to show the connecting decks and longitudinal bulkheads. Because the tank top deck has a skewed plane, the construction lines will need to be trimmed before we can create the frame plates. The frame plates can be defined by selecting in between the boundaries. Datum lines can be used to help locate cutout locations within the ring frame. 
Here I use the datum line midpoints to place equally spaced holes. This can be done by creating a circle or line and then adding that object to the plate part. These plates can be mirrored about the center line of the ship because in this case, it is symmetrical. The frames we have created can now be replicated to the other transverse planar groups, including the watertight sections, maintaining a relationship with the original parts. We'll now look at creating the plated in frames by clicking inside the mold plane boundaries. Although not required at this stage, stiffener cutouts can be added at the click of a button if required. We will now add vertical profiles to the plates. These profiles require a trim. In this case, I will set an offset allowing it to connect with the longitudinal profile it intersects. This builds a parametric relationship with the deck should it need to change position later. These plate parts together with their attached profiles can be mirrored about the center line of the ship before being replicated to similar frame types. Now let's look at the result. While I have only demonstrated modeling one unit, the whole ship could be modeled at once before the unit breakdown is defined. For more information, visit www.ssi-corporate.com. Thank you for watching.